on February 22nd of 2000, with the evidence from Jerry's briefcase, the cops charged Cherie with first-degree murder and conspiracy to commit murder in the death of her husband. But when they went to arrest her, she was gone. Cherie was in Reno with Jeff Foster, the Schwann ice cream man she was dating at the time. When she landed, the police were waiting for her at Bishop Airport and took her into custody at that time. Was Cherie Miller really a cold-blooded killer? Or merely an oversexed housewife in the wrong chat room with the wrong guy? On February 22nd of 2000, Flint, Michigan police arrested 27-year-old Cherie Miller at Bishop International Airport. She was charged with murder and conspiracy to commit murder in the shooting death of her husband, Bruce. Hours later, they broke the news to Bruce's family. She wasn't the trigger man. She had a trigger man, and she's got a tr paper trail a mile long. That's what he told me. But Cherie maintained she was innocent. She called my mom and uh, told her, they're going to get this mess all straightened out, and I'm going to get out of jail. But Cherie wasn't going anywhere. Held without bond until her trial, the state versus Cherie Miller began on December 12th of 2000. Word of the internet mistress turned alleged murderess made news across the country. Because this was such a bizarre, twisted story, an internet murder, sex tapes, hundreds and hundreds of emails, it attracted media attention, uh, not only locally but nationwide. Prosecutors went straight for the jugular. They accused Cherie of logging onto the internet with the express mission of finding someone to kill her husband. They allege Cherie found her patsy in the form of Jerry Cassidy, a.k.a. Reno Dudes, and enticed him to kill her husband through a web of sex, lies, and videotape. Prosecutors started by introducing the videotape. The prosecution believed that the video was one part of their evidence that was crucial in linking Cherie and Jerry together. Next, prosecutors submitted into evidence hundreds of emails and instant messages demonstrating how Cherie had manipulated Jerry Cassidy. Cherie used the internet as a means for getting into Jerry's head and manipulating him. He was essentially her stooge, her fool. As for Cherie's motive, prosecutors told the jury that was an easy one. Cherie wanted Bruce dead for one reason, money. A divorce would not have given her the whole kit and caboodle. As far as we can see, she still ended up with $160,000, $70,000, which was, for someone that has no money, that's a lot of money. The defense countered by putting their client on the stand. As she was sworn in, Cherie looked every inch the grieving widow. She uh, appeared to be dressed in clothing that she probably never would have worn out in public before. She had a uh, mousy librarian look to her, a meek, I didn't do it look. Cherie testified the emails to Jerry Cassidy were all just part of her online fantasy world. Her big thing was this was all just a big fantasy. Well, when people fantasize, do they fantasize about good things? Or do they fantasize about bad things and killing my husband? And she had no explanation. But when it came to the emails that specifically outlined the murder plot, Cherie was quick with an explanation. She claimed her spurned internet lover had made those up. There's absolutely nothing on a computer that can be original. Uh, that cannot be changed and deleted. Jerry Cassidy, in one last desperate act uh, of a life that he had flushed down the toilet, he sought to take Cherie down with him. The defense's argument sounded plausible until prosecutors called a security expert from America Online as a rebuttal witness. He explained that an instant message could be uh, fabricated, but that it would be very difficult. He also verified that Jerry Cassidy and Sherry Miller were online at the time that these conversations were supposed to have taken place. It looked like the jury would have no trouble convicting Sheree Miller. But after three days of deliberation, they still hadn't reached a verdict. 
you could hear people screaming. People were coming out with red eyes and tears, and I've seen some juries go at it, but not like that, not for three days. Finally, on December 22nd, the jury returned with their verdict. The jury finds the defendant guilty as charged of conspiracy to commit first degree premeditated murder. Guilty on all charges. She was convicted of murder and conspiracy to commit murder and sentenced to life in prison, plus 54 years. The jury seemed to have seen through Cherie and seen her superficiality, her manipulativeness, her dishonesty. How could a woman who had started with so little and had so much, beautiful kids, a wealthy, devoted husband, mastermind a murder plot that brought down not one loving man, but two. She met her husband, had an affair, claimed to the person she was having an affair that she was pregnant, got her husband murdered, and moved in with another guy, all within less than a year's time. Clearly, Cherie was someone for whom relationships meant nothing. 